These are eight unconventional pieces of financial advice that changed my entire life and let me leave my day job at 24. Avoid credit card debt. My parents. This lovely piece of advice was given to me by my parents. Uh, much like a lot of people in the world, honestly, they have struggled with credit card debt. Consumer debt and high interest debt can be extremely crippling when you're buying stuff with money that you don't even have. And then that can snowball really quickly when you're paying 20 something percent on this money and you're just trying to make the minimum payments and it can get out of hand really quickly. Luckily, I took that advice to heart and I avoided credit cards till I was like, uh, 21 or something like that. But then I learned about this idea of travel rewards where you could sign up for certain cards that have huge sign up bonuses if you hit their minimum spend within the first month or two usually. You hit that minimum spend, you get that reward, you stop using the card, eventually you cancel it in the correct way, and then you pretty much just get uh, free travel going forward. Obviously there's way more that goes into that and you need to make sure that you do it correctly, but I've been doing it for a couple of years now and my credit score is the highest it's ever been and I've gotten thousands of dollars worth of free travel, so I think that's a really cool tool but credit card debt in particular, crippling. Don't follow the crowd. So this one wasn't necessarily told to me, it was more shown to me by my parents and my family. It's the idea that just because everybody is doing a certain thing doesn't mean that is the right thing to do. And I've kind of adapted that into my life uh, uh, maybe a little bit too much in that if everybody's doing anything, I'm generally just going to try to do something else. Most people try to retire when they're 65. I am following the fire movement and I'm trying to retire when I'm, you know, 30, 35. Most people get a new iPhone every year or two. I'm going to try to do something else. That's a lot cheaper. There's this general patterns that most people do where you go to school, you try to get a good paying job working for somebody else with good benefits. And then you get, you know, a nice house and a nice car in this general pattern of life. But that mindset kind of showed me that it's okay to, you know, start your own business, to fail at a bunch of different stuff, to try new things. You don't have to work for somebody else at the safe, secure job. You can take chances uh, and, and do things and experiment with a different lifestyle than everybody else. And that's also why I've really gotten into minimalism because it is that same type of mindset uh, of being a little bit different than other people and finding what is right for you. Now, another way that you can make sure that you're not following the crowd and you're being different it's by subscribing to this channel because believe it or not, most people in the world are not subscribed. It's okay to be cheap for a little bit. Now, I don't, I don't remember a specific quote about this one, but as I started reading books about financial independence, it kind of became clear to me uh, that if I wanted to live like nobody else later, I had to live like nobody else now. And that's kind of one of the reasons I became so frugal and still am uh, really frugal. I'm trying to get away from being cheap, but I, I was cheap for a bit. But it seems like there are cycles in life and if you can be frugal and borderline cheap when you're younger for a few years, that's what allowed me uh, to save up money and start investing and really changed my whole life where if I had just been spending freely uh, from the beginning, then that would have made my whole life a lot harder, especially since I didn't have much money to start with. So it's okay to take a few years and be extremely frugal and save up money that can change your whole life uh, later on. So you're not constantly living paycheck to paycheck. Most people work for money, but the rich understand how to make money work for them. Now, when I first heard this, I was like, yeah, I, I kind of get that. The rich get richer. They have money. They can invest millions of dollars. Uh, I can hardly afford to, you know, go out to eat once a month, you know, so uh, I didn't think it was really for me. But once I really understood that that was probably the only way I was going to be able to escape the rat race, get out of my nine to five and really change my life. I started taking all that money that I was saving and actually investing it. And that's when things really started to change. A couple years ago, I invested just $800 into this account and I totally forgot that I had done it. And now it is at $1,300. And this is just a VTI, which is a basic index fund. So that really showed me how easy and simple investing can be, but also how important it is because that money, if I had just left it in a bank account, wouldn't have earned any money, but now it earned me $500 by doing absolutely nothing which is really, really cool. And I started to understand uh, that eventually I would have to make the switch from trading time for money to having my money earn money and go out and work. So that's when I started to try to leverage my time. So instead of going to work for eight hours a day, which I was still doing, I started uh, different businesses. I started investing things like YouTube, where you can put a ton of effort and time and sometimes money in upfront, and that will continue to pay you for years and years. And that is an extremely powerful thing. 
focus on the big three. This was from specifically the fire movement and choose if I, which is a podcast set for life and really a few other books like that, where instead of being frugal in every area of your life, which I still am, uh, to really focus on your big three, which is going to be housing, transportation, and food or entertainment. The idea is that it's much easier to cut um, a few percentage off your housing by moving to a smaller place or a cheaper place uh, or doing something like I've done and house hacking than it is to uh, cut a few dollars a day by being extremely frugal and not spending money uh, maybe on clothes or food, which I still don't do that as well, but I also focus on those big three. That also can mean not buying new cars or trying to move somewhere closer to work so you don't need a car at all. I did this by buying five to 10 year old cars uh, for cash that were pretty cheap. And then with food and entertainment, it's only been in the past uh, probably year or so that I've actually started going out to eat more than like once every few months. And that's just a huge way to save money. And then also uh, meal planning and budgeting for groceries and stuff like that can just really lower those huge expenses. And that makes the rest of your budget so much easier. Don't be afraid of debt. This was rich dad, poor dad. Now, generally I am a very risk averse person. So uh, debt seems like a very scary thing to me, but once I started to understand it and how it can work for me, and that's how uh, kind of the rich make money is by using other people's money. Uh, that's what really changed a lot of things for me. Now, let me be clear. There's a difference between good debt and bad debt. Bad debt would be consumer debt, payday lending, credit card debt, uh, anything like that, as opposed to good debt would be debt that is going to actually make you money. That could be like real estate debt, sometimes debt on your house, uh, sometimes debt for school, if you actually use the degree that you're paying for. But the reason that debt can actually be such a powerful tool is because of leverage. Now, I actually don't believe in paying off a mortgage early because that debt is costing me around 3%. So instead of paying off a 3% debt, I would rather invest that money and earn maybe 10%, which is like a net seven percent gain as long as that debt is making me money every single month uh, it, it's good debt to have and you actually want to have that because you're getting rich off of other people's money take risks while you're young now again I don't remember who told me this I have like the memory of the goldfish I'm sorry but a lot of people will spend a thousand dollars on an iPhone but investing a thousand dollars into the stock market or into crypto or saving up and investing into real estate is too much work it's too risky I don't have a financial advisor I don't know what I'm doing but yet somehow they're okay with just wasting that money or having you know a five hundred dollar a month car payment now I kind of looked at it as what's the worst that could happen and if i don't take this shot now it's gonna get a lot harder as i get older because if i am 22 and i lose everything that i have and i go back to baseline uh, that's not that far to drop because i didn't really have anything to start with <laughs> but as i get older and i have more responsibilities more people relying on me it becomes much harder so if you're able to take a year and, and start a youtube channel or start a business or invest or buy rentals or or do whatever you want to do trying it as soon as possible, investing as soon as possible, taking risks as soon as possible so that you can fail quicker and you can learn faster and you can possibly succeed faster when it becomes much harder to do that the longer that you wait. Money is actually not the goal. Now, well, well, this whole video has been about money. Money is not actually my main goal in life and I don't think it should be your goal either. For me, maximizing my income and earning as much as possible is not really what I'm looking for. That is why I left my nine to five a little earlier than I probably should have. But the idea wasn't to have just a ton of money so that I could uh, you know, go buy extravagant stuff. It was to have a lifestyle that I was happy with and I only needed a little bit of money in order to get that because I was so frugal. So think about what is your goal in, in one year, in three years, in five years? What would you like your ideal day to look like? What work would be fulfilling that you could do from anywhere maybe that you would actually look forward uh, you know, to your Monday morning? And how can you structure your life around that? And maybe that doesn't involve uh, you know, working 24 or seven so you can have as much money as possible. It involves you know, starting up a, a side hustle or, or doing something or investing so that you can get to your ideal uh, living situation and ideal day sooner. And I've been able to kind of do that with YouTube and it's because of all you guys supported me and I really do appreciate that. If you want to support me more and help my self-esteem, then don't forget uh, to subscribe so that I can get to 100,000 by the end of the year because that's uh, really trying for that. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week.